Page 1. Truth and Reality, Otto Rank, 1936. Contents Translator's Preface 1. The Birth of Individuality 1. 2. Will and Force 13. 3. Knowing and Experiencing 24. 4. Truth and Reality 35. 5. Self and Ideal 48. 6. Creation and Guilt 62. 7. Happiness and Redemption 84. Translator's Preface Truth and Reality is the third volume of Ranks Grund's Eugeiner Genetics and Psychology of Grund der Psychoanalyse der Structure, Outlines of a Genetic Psychology on the Basis of the Psychoanalysis of the Ego Structure. The first volume, published in 1927, is concerned with the biological development of the ego, including the genesis of genitality, the origin of guilt feeling, and the genesis of the object relation and discusses the psychic mechanisms such as projection, identification, and denial, an important concept which Rank introduces as more basic than repression. It has never been published in English but was delivered in lecture form under the auspices of the New York School of Social Work in 1926, before it appeared in German. Volume 2, Gesaltung und das Druck der Persönlichkeit, The Development of Personality published in 1928, goes beyond the biological level to the essentially human development of man as an emotional, social and ethical being. It contains discussions of character formation as contrasted with something we call personality, the development of the emotional life, education, social adaptation, creativity, and the helping function. Like the first volume, this book also was presented first in the United States as a lecture course for the New York School of Social Work and for the Pennsylvania School of Social Work in 1927, although it has not appeared in an English translation. Truth and Reality, the third volume, like the other two, was offered first in English in lecture form, in this case for the Pennsylvania School of Social Work alone, just before its publication in German in 1929. While it forms the conclusion of the two volumes just described, it presents in clear, integrated form an original point of view representing Rank's unique contribution to psychology and philosophy, which had not come through into full consciousness until this final book was written. Although The Trauma of Birth, published in German in 1924, marks the beginning of Rank's development beyond Freudian psychoanalysis, the first two volumes of Genetis Psychology, while they differ radically from the orthodox psychoanalytic approach, are not yet clearly differentiated from Freudian psychology. Before the third volume was written Rank had found the key to his own theoretical organization in a sudden realization of the role of the will in the analytic situation. Under the illumination of that discovery he wrote simultaneously the second volume of his Technique der Psychoanalyse showing the relation of will to the therapeutic process and repudiating completely the Freudian psychoanalytic method, and this third volume of Genetis Psychology, Truth and Reality, in which he develops the psychological and philosophic implications underlying his new vision of the therapeutic process. In Truth and Reality Rank offers not one more psychology of the individual in the interest of therapy, but a philosophy of man's willing, an historical sketch of the evolution of will itself with its inexhaustible creativity, its dynamic of projection and denial and its ever-increasing burden of fear and guilt. Jesse Taft Philadelphia, December 1935 Truth and Reality, Otto Rank 1936. A Life History of the Human Will. Jesus. I am come to bear witness unto the truth. Pilate, what is truth? Chapter 1. The Birth of Individuality. 1.1 Humans, by their will, create their personality. 
The most important event in the life of a man is the moment when he becomes conscious of his own ego. A. Tolsto. The lines of thought comprehended in this book constitute a preliminary statement of the final working out of a concept of the psychic which I had anticipated in the work of my youth Der Kunstler, 1905, almost a quarter of a century ago. The consequent building up and shaping of this early conception led me gradually to a genetic and constructive psychology which, on the basis of practical analytic experiences, has finally crystallized into a will psychology. This approach threw such meaningful light upon the psychological foundation of epistemology and ethics that it led me ultimately to a philosophy of the psychic which I now attempt to outline in the following chapters. The practical, therapeutic aspect of the will psychology I developed in the second part of my technique of psychoanalysis which was published simultaneously. While at first I was completely under the influence of Freudian realism and tried to express my conception of the creative man, the artist, in the biological mechanistic terms of Freud's natural science ideology, on the basis of my own experience, I have since been enabled to formulate these common human problems in a common human language as well. The Trauma of Birth, a book written in 1923, marks the decisive turning point in this development. There I compared to the creative drive of the individual as treated in Der Kunstler, the creation of the individual himself, not merely physically, but also psychically in the sense of the rebirth experience, which I understood psychologically as the actual creative act of the human being. For in this act the psychic ego is born out of the biological corporeal ego and the human being becomes at once creator and creature or actually moves from creature to creator in the ideal case, creator of himself, his own personality. This conception of the birth of individuality from the self as a consequent psychological carrying out of the original trauma of birth from the mother, leads also to another kind of methodology of treatment and presentation. While in the trauma of birth I proceeded from a concrete experience in the analytic situation and its new interpretation, and as an Der Kunstler strove to broaden it into the universally human and cultural, my present conception just reversed is based on the universally human yes, if you will, on the cosmic idea of soul. And seeks to assemble all its expressions in the focal point of the separate individuality. It has to do neither with the leading back of the general, the supra-individual, to the concrete and personal, nor with a wishing to explain the one from the other. Although this may often be the appearance, yes, at times may even underlie it, yet this is not the object of this presentation which rather sets for itself the goal of viewing the two worlds of macrocosm and microcosm as parallel, and only as far as possible, pointing out their interdependence and their reactions upon one another. In this attempt, excursions into the history of culture are naturally unavoidable in order at least to note the great counterpart of the individual in a few of its typical forms. Page 2